Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of St. Luke's Gallery. For this episode, I'd like to share a work of art for an important devotion, and that would be the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The painting you see here is from 1767, and it was painted by the Italian artist Pompeo Batoni. We'll get to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, both the painting and the devotion, in a little while, but first here's a bio of Pompeo Batoni. Batoni was born in 1708 in the Tuscan city of Lucca, which is now modern-day Italy. He moved to Rome at the age of 19 and apprenticed for the late Baroque and Rococo painters Agostino Masucci, Sebastiano Conca, and Francesco Imperiali. His first commission came by chance in the year 1732 when he ran into the Count of Baccaresca. Both men were taking shelter from a rainstorm, and during the course of the conversation, the Count commissioned him to paint an altarpiece for his family's chapel. He became a popular Roman painter with a large clientele of British travelers who hired him for portraits. He was married twice and he had 12 children, and he died in Rome in 1787 at the age of 70, 79. He's buried at his parish church of St. Lorenzo in Lucina. I mentioned on the last slide that Batoni was a popular portrait artist in Rome. Among his many clients were the royalty of Europe, and here we have two examples. On the left, Queen Maria Anna of Austria. This is a pretty typical portrait style seen throughout the ages. What stands out with this one, well to me at least, is that her clothing is more photorealistic than her face and her hair. Many artists fall into the habit of focusing on the face and hurrying through the supporting elements. On the right, Grand Duke Leopold of Tuscany and Emperor Joseph II. Unlike Queen Maria Anna, this is a rather unusual portrait. Note how the two men are shaking hands with Leopold looking directly at us, and this was typical of portraits, certainly at the time. But Joseph is looking at something off-site. He's not looking at the Grand Duke. What he's looking at, well, I have no idea. You'll note the appearance of St. Peter's Basilica in the background a subtle reminder of how the monarchies of Europe were very closely tied to the church. How things have changed over the centuries, and I'm afraid not for the better. Here are two more portraits, one sacred and one secular, both with non-traditional compositions that I find quite interesting. On the left, St. Peter. I really like this image. We see the first pope with the keys to the kingdom, looking up as if he's pondering something or perhaps listening to something or someone from above. I know it's a rather dark painting, but if you look closely on the right, you can see the rooster. To the right, we have Mrs. Robert Sandy Lance. This is another, another brilliant, tediously executed painting. Note the lace around her neck. And how can you not notice that Mona Lisa smile as she's looking off sight at something? Shifting over to some of Batoni's works of sacred art, here are two fine examples. On the left, the return of the prodigal son, and on the right, the sacred family. I think this is a nice side-by-side. -side. On the left, we have a finely illustrated, seriously, look at the details on the father's clothing, painting of a son returning to his father's embrace and shame. And on the right, the word made flesh with his blessed mother and foster father. I really like the depiction of St. Joseph here. He's always shown very serious in most artistic depictions, but here, in a moment of pure, intimate joy. He's not the focal point, but the love he had for the Blessed Virgin and Our Lord is clearly expressed. A great work by Batoni. And now let's get to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. For those of you not familiar with his devotion, here's the background. The painting of the Sacred Heart of Jesus was inspired by the apparition of Our Lord in the year 1673 to a French nun who became St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. Our Lord came to St. Margaret Mary on the feast of St. John the Evangelist while she was in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. She described his Sacred Heart with the following words. The Divine Heart was presented to me in a throne of flames, more resplendent than the sun, transparent as crystal with this adorable wound and it was surrounded with a crown of thorns, signifying the punctures made in it by our sins, and a cross above signifying that from the first instant of his incarnation, the cross was implanted into it. 
Jesus said to her, My divine heart is so inflamed with love for men, and for thee in particular, that being unable any longer to contain within itself the flames of its burning charity, it needs to spread them abroad by thy means, and manifest itself to them in order to enrich them with the precious treasures which I discovered to thee, and with graces of sanctification and salvation, necessary to withdraw them from the abyss of perdition. I have chosen thee as an abyss of unworthiness and ignorance for the accomplishment of this great design, in order that everything may be done by me. Jesus then asked St. Margaret Mary to place her head on his breast, asking her to give him the gift of her small heart to be placed in the furnace of his divine heart, before he returned to her inflamed by his love. Our Lord promised St. Margaret Mary twelve blessings to those who practice devotion to his sacred heart. One, I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. Two, I will give peace in their families. Three, I will console them in all their troubles. Four, I will be their refuge in life and especially in death. Five, I will abundantly bless all their undertakings. Six, sinners shall find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. 7. Tepid souls shall become fervent. 8. Fervent souls shall rise speedily to great perfection. 9. I will bless those places wherein the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and venerated. 10. I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened of hearts. 11. Persons who propagate this devotion shall have their names eternally written in my heart. 12. In the excess of the mercy of my heart, I promise you that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who will receive communion on the first Fridays for nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance. They will not die in my displeasure, nor without receiving the sacraments, and my heart will be their secure refuge in that last hour. And now let's talk a bit about Batoni's painting. When I was in grade school, there was a copy of a more contemporary painting of Jesus with the Sacred Heart in the stairway of my school. For a later day painting, it was reverent, and there's no doubt that whoever the artist was, he used Batoni's original as an inspiration. One day, the nun who taught us mentioned that we should always be good in school because no matter where we stood in the stairway, the eyes of Jesus are always looking at us. And she was right. Pause this video for a minute and stand to the left, then the right, above, and then below the screen. You can't hide. His eyes are looking right at you. And that's what makes this painting by Batoni so effective as a work of sacred art to meditate upon one of the Catholic Church's most important devotions. It may not be as photorealistic as some of Batoni's portraits that we saw earlier, nor the composition very innovative, but it is a painting that the more you study, you feel it's looking right into your soul, and that alone is so powerful. The colors of red and blue, shown in Our Lord's tunic or key. Red, the color of blood, represents martyrdom and humanity, while the blue in the mantle represents the color of heaven and of the divine. The gaze on Our Lord's face is powerful, as I noted on the last slide, but his right hand should also take notice. It's extended to us, inviting us to come to him and to his sacred heart. Take a look at the close-up image on the right. It's easy to miss it at a quick glance, but note how in addition to the crown of thorns, the heart shows a puncture wound from the spear of Longinus. Another nice touch by Batoni. Devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus has spread far and wide since the apparitions of St. Margaret Mary Alicote. During the French Revolution, the martyrs of the Vendée adopted an icon of the Sacred Heart with the tagline, Dieu le roi as an act of proud defiance against the tyranny of the revolutionaries. Later, the Canadian province of Quebec incorporated the Sacred Heart, along with the Fleur de Lis in its flag, and that was in use until the 1950s. Church th churches throughout the world are named in honor of the Sacred Heart, and there's probably one in your own diocese. And as for Batoni's painting, it resides in Rome at the Church of the Jesu, shown here in the center. And that concludes episode 10 of St. Luke's Gallery. Thank you for watching, and I invite you to come back again for additional presentations. Until then, please visit stlukesgallery.com 
and also the channels on BitChute, Vimeo, Rumble, or YouTube. I'll have another episode in a few weeks. In the meantime, if you have a question or a comment, you can email me via mail at stlooksgallery.com. Thank you again, and may God bless you.